So I kind of obsess over my YouTube comments. Even though I don't respond much, I read just about every one, which is probably not good for my mental health. And I realized a few weeks ago that I made a big mistake on my Land Cruiser purchase unveil with this clip. You better be up to date on your tetanus shots. Because of this crazy hole in the rough interior, I think it slipped past any serious bidders at auction who would naturally assume it was a total rust bucket. Like every five comments was on the watch, which is a Rolex, yes. It was a gift actually, a, a gift from Parker's billionaire dad. But like my fleet of depreciated luxury cars, I do have a fleet of depreciated luxury watches, which I'll show you now. Come see. In addition to my 10 year old GMT, I have a TAG 6000 chronograph that I got from my lemonade stand funds and a Breitling Aerospace I found digging through Salamandrin's trash. And this really old Omega Seamaster that Rob Ferretti probably owned because he's old. I guess I'm reaching on that one. I mean, I'm 31, which is like 61 in YouTube years. Anyway, the reason why I'm showing you my watch collection is because I have a recent addition to my watch Hoopty fleet, and it's actually brand new and was given to me by the Movement Watch Company to try out. I chose this chrono model with the Sage dial and the brushed bronze finish since it's really unique. I like this dial because it's like a minimalist and modernized tribute to a Rolex Daytona, which the cost of entry for one of those used is like $10,000, while this one retails for only $140. It really is a nice clean design and I've seriously been getting compliments ever since I put it on. And you can pick out one of your own from their wide selection and get $15 off today with free shipping and free returns by going to MVMT.com and using the code Hoovies15. I'm very happy with the quality of the watch as well, and it looks great on my wrist as they offer watches in different sizes. I usually opt for the smaller ones as I have the wrist size of a 12 year old boy. So I really do feel comfortable promoting their product. Also the company's platform and history is really cool. It was founded by two college dropouts with a dream, and they went from being broke to selling over a million watches in over 160 countries. This is the same entrepreneurial spirit I've had my entire adult life except I'm terrible at business and managing my money as all of you know, but movement has offered to help. This is my first major sponsorship I've taken on since starting my silly YouTube channel a year ago. And these folks like my public access version of an endless cheap car challenge enough to want to see their product in it. Of course, their goal is to sell watches and that is very dependent that you treat yourself. I would love to see my channel contribute to their success but the watches are nice enough to sell on their own, so now is the time to step up your watch game. Go to MVMT.com and use the code Hoovies15, and a link to their website is in the description below. Join the movement! Now back to the cars, and yes, I am getting rid of quite a few of them, starting with one of the OGs of this channel, which I filmed its goodbye the other day. Take a look. Well, hello there. No, this isn't a clickbait title. I am selling a bunch of my cars, starting with the Mighty Van. I'm actually picking up the gentleman who is buying this car at the airport here shortly, and I sort of wanted to document it because clearly he's as crazy as me, if not crazier, since A, he's buying a minivan from 1991 and driving it back to San Francisco, and B, he's buying it from me. He's seen all the videos and what I've done to it. If you don't remember, It's not making any noise, is it? No. It might be now, but it wasn't when I was doing it. That can't go back on. Ow. I really should have cleaned this out a little bit before picking him up. Oh well. Hey, it's Tyler Hoover. I was just calling, are you uh, outside or off the plane? Okay, great. Well, I'm pulling up in the van now. It'll be kind of hard to miss, so I guess wave at me. It's a goofy van. It's so much shorter than I thought, too. Yeah, the short <laughs> wheelbase. It is the short bus, for sure. And I guess you are a little bit of a short bus for driving a 91 van cross-country back yeah, to right. California. This, this thing is awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, let's load up. Are you hungry? You're selling a lot of them? Yeah, well, I've just got a lot more coming in. I was hoping it was going to have an no, off no. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a bunch of CDs that are going to blow, I guess. 
<laughs> but you had one before, right? Yeah, yeah. Or one that's on its last leg? Yeah, it's on its last leg, and I, I love it. I loved it so much, but everything's going. The fuel pump's gone. Just, yeah. Mm. I can't believe this thing only has 51,000 miles. Uh, yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> I bought it for $2,800, probably put $3,000 into it, and sold it for $2,500 to you. <laughs> And I definitely didn't make like four grand in ad revenue on this thing, so this is a really stupid. I had a lot of fun though. Well, as long as I can get within 200 miles of my house, I bought the upgrade. The Triple H owing range? Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, good luck. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. Lot. I'll send you some off road pictures. See ya, sucker. <laughs> So like the clickbait thumbnail said, five more cars are going. So what are they and why? You probably know most of them. My 2007 Mercedes S600 is gone to Tavares' Hoopty Fleet in Florida. And I actually did a few fun videos with him for his channel. And check that out, which I'll link below. I've also sold my 2003 Ford Mustang Mach 1 to a friend here locally. The same guy who was driving my $300 Jeep when it blew up, actually, so I probably should have charged him more. And my 1993 Lincoln Town Car is now in the hands of Tom, the contest winner who lives in North Carolina. He's actually a radio DJ, and I called him to a show recently and surprisingly didn't commit any FCC violations during our conversation. I'll link the interview in the description box below as well. Whoa! Didn't turn. That leaves two more cars that I'm parting with, and it's not any of these that I have parked at home. Whoa! Of course, I never part with my grandmother's old 1985 Mercedes 500 SL, and my Cayenne Turbo, I'm actually coming up on its six month anniversary. All right, I need to hang on something so I don't roll backwards. So there's a video coming soon on that where I make some improvements, which are already in progress. You might notice one change to it already. I'm also coming up with another anniversary on my Acura NSX, one year, and I have some cool parts coming for it as well. As for my C36, I've been driving it a lot. I probably drive the C36 and the Cayenne Turbo the most, but actually I sort of want to demod it. The straight piped exhaust is driving me crazy with that droning, but otherwise I'm really enjoying it. So that's everything at the house. To see another car that I'm getting rid of, you're gonna have to go to my Hoopty Fleet headquarters, an 1800 square foot barn that I rent about a mile from here. So let's go. So of the four cars here, one is leaving, and it's obviously not Apollo 911, my 1999 Porsche 911 with 249,000 miles and an LS2 swapped in the back. I'm just about to get started on all the tests I have for it, starting with a dyno run soon. Also, I'm not gonna be selling any of my new projects like my $500 Subaru SVX that I want to fix a few little things and then beat to death, or my $2,100 1999 LX470, a 100 series Land Cruiser with a fancy Lexus badge, basically. And I am planning to build this thing into an Overland Expedition vehicle. Do a lift kit, some bumpers, maybe a rooftop tent so I can sleep on the roof, that kind of stuff. So that leaves my other wooded Chrysler product, this 1983 Chrysler LeBaron. Now when I bought this thing, it came from Virginia, I think. Or it came from a guy that had 22 of these. Yes, 22 exclusively Chrysler LeBarons, and he was eliminating his entire fleet. And I called him up and I told him that I wanted two things. I wanted a car with no rust, and I wanted a car that talks. It has a talking car feature. And he got the, the talking part right, but not the rust part. I can literally double fist the floors there's a hole that big. The floors are totally gone and there's rust on every single panel. This thing also has a bad carburetor and needs a ton of mechanical work. So it's just a goner. There's really nothing more I can do with it. I considered making it into like an amphibious pontoon boat or maybe burying it in the ground for a year and seeing what happens when you bury a car for a year and if it'll start, but really, I'm just done with this. So I'm gonna put it on eBay with a $1 starting bid. 
and it can be somebody else's problem. Now, if you're a lemons race team and you're interested in doing something with this car, like a lemons race team with some experience, I'd love to hear from you. But I haven't started this thing since I lobbed golf balls at it like two months ago, so I don't even know if it'll start. Let's see. I don't even like sitting in this thing because water got in and ruined the floors, obviously, but the interior is also just filled with mold. Seriously, it's been two months since I started it. Well, that's a good sign. Nope. This is beneath the dignity of my Porsche. Oh. Well, here I am getting close to a battery again. Never a good idea for me. Come on, baby. To show you the car I'm selling next, I had to travel up to Halstead, Kansas, home of my mechanic, the car wizard. So let's try and answer the question I get in every video, and it's what is going on with the Bentley? Why aren't you doing any Bentley updates? And there just really isn't anything to update you on. You guys are about as demanding as my four-year-old daughter and asking for an update on this thing, and I'm not gas monkey garage and can pull something off in five days. I'm an idiot. This car has sat ever since the last video where I found out that it was owned by a Russian gangster and we fixed the electrical problems with a new switch. The job this car is waiting for is replacing all those vacuum lines which are up above the transmission. And we're going to have to drop the power steering rack in order to reach it. This is going to be a multi-day job and David doesn't want to tie up his main lift doing it if there's any complications and it's there for a week, then he's lost all of his other business. The other lift he has on the side where we did the Porsche 911 LS swap is reserved for a Volkswagen Cabrio over there that's actually been sitting here since he opened his shop a year ago and it's owned by his landlord. It had the engine rebuilt and the motor is going to go back into it. And then another spot where we could put this Bentley and Star on it has been taken up by my buddy's Ferrari 355 which I've been trying to do a video on for almost a year but it's always been broken, one thing after another after another. Every time I schedule a video, he calls me up and says, eh, not this time, it's not quite running right. Also, my Prius is up here. The interior is totally gutted. You guys saw the crazy material I was gonna use in my last Prius update. So, Pimp My Prius is continuing and there'll be an update video on that this month as well. So, back to the subject of selling cars. One of the recent additions to the Car Wizards crazy repertoire is he's trying his hand at being a used car dealer. He got his dealer's license up here in Halstead and he has a lot full of hoopties. It's like my life before I started YouTubing and opening restaurants all over the country. Welcome to Omega Auto Clinic here at the corner of Main and Main in Halstead, Kansas. And we got a fine selection of hoopties for you, starting with this 2002 Buick Park Avenue 3800 V6. Pretty much unstoppable, only 3250. And right here, a 2004 Cadillac SRX with a Cadillac North Star engine. No comment, but you can buy it right now for 6000 something something. And then here, the old standard 5.7 liter GMC Yukon 98 blue leather interior. It's got rouge, it's very pretty. Here for only 2250, 2250 for a Suburban. And then here, oh my God, are you gonna be Steve McQueen in this 2007 Ford Mustang GT with that hand shaker manual transmission and a low, low price of only 10,995. And ooh, looky here, a 2005 BMW, a BMW here in Halstead, 745i, 134,000 miles, yours for only 6250, really. Here, these things are very reliable and a dream to work on, and it's yours for only, I can't be reading this right, $6,650 for a BMW. And look at them mighty fine wheels. My goodness, whoever owned this car before had excellent taste. Really, if you want this BMW, I'll give you a really good price on it. Hoobies Garage at Yahoo.com. You can email me. Because I'd rather sell it to one of you guys because you know exactly what you're getting into. 
good lord, that was cringy, even for me. And this vlogging thing really isn't in my comfort zone, but I'm going to try and get better and do something like this once a month or so, usually when I travel. And speaking of, I will be in LA December 2nd at Radwood, which is a festival for 80s and 90s cars. I'll put a link to their website, like my 37th link in the description below, and I hope to meet a lot of you like-minded fools there. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer in the next one, whenever I do it, leave them in the comments section and hit that like button if you think the $1 opening bid on my LeBaron is too expensive. And as always, thank you for watching. I do my own stunts. Oh, that's not, I didn't want to go reverse. Go, 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 go. go. Oh, God. Okay.